divas and what's up divas it's your girl april and you already know what today is if you're tuned in of course it is wednesday and it is real talk wednesday so we will begin this very shortly i've got three episodes for you i might try my very best to squeeze in four it all depends on how talkative i get but before we start this video in case you're wondering about this hair that i'm actually rocking today this is the italian light yaki or the italian yaki and it is a glueless wig cap and it is actually from um oh my gosh i've had it for a minute this is the first time i've ever worn it because i had to do a video on it but it is gorgeous it is 18 inches and um silk base closure or silk base top so it's a really a lot easier to put on two three combs and a uh, adjustable strap in the back unfortunately um, i do like it a lot it's um it is, like I said, like a light yakky. Um, kind of reminds me of light yakky versus silky together with some ripples in it. But it curls really pretty. Um, I went ahead and did a video for it today. But I will be posting this unit up on my website. Going with the windwigs.webly.com for sale. Amongst that, there are other units that are already um, pre-made by me. Or if you want a custom wig, you can also get one created as well. A U-par or a wig. Um, the reason why I'm putting this up for sale is because I only have one head. One head. And I don't wear... The, um, I, I do change them, but I just tend to love the ones that I create a lot better. I do have one favorite lace, glueless full lace wig that I will tell you is from Ozo Wigs, which I absolutely favor. I love the color of it, but you know, it just... I have a, I have one already that's straight, um, that's yakky texture like this, which I created by Perfect Locks Hair, and I love that. So I really try to change it up a lot. I don't want to have so many. So anyway, this will be on the website available for sale. Also, the necklace that I'm wearing, I will be featuring in a Get Ready With Me Fashion Plus Size Edition video, which is from Happiness Boutique. I received two beautiful statement pieces, which I absolutely love. They do um, ship free. Um, they are located in the UK, but they have free shipping, so keep that in mind. But their pieces are really affordable and so trendy and stylish. Like, I love this. Normally, when I wear a necklace, it bothers my scar right here, but for some reason, this one is not. And it may be just where the placement is is for the particular pieces on this neck piece so this one is not bothering because after a while like a couple of minutes I end up and taking them off but yeah I do have that and I also have some things to show you before this video even starts if you guys are interested I did do a video on some bras a few weeks ago a couple weeks ago and I did showcase them I went ahead and bought 12 more bras from them and it came today it was about a week and a half ago when i ordered them they are from china but i love them because they really fit and they're so affordable so for 12 bras i paid 66 dollars plus the dhl fee which came to 79 dollars for everything um i do have one on today and um i love it so i'm going to show you real quick i did have some people that were kind of confused um they thought it was just a wholesale site and some people thought that you know you had to buy in bulk you don't have to buy in bulk there are um a lot of things to look through but what you need to look through i don't buy the panties because it seems like the panties are sold by bag meaning more in a in a bunch so i don't buy those but the bras are sold by lot or by bag which you can get like three of the same different colors or yada 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 i just look for the bras that say by piece so when you go on a website, if you look where it says sold by piece, just click on that bra. Um, you click on it, sometimes you may see a thousand. If you see a thousand, then get off of that page. But if you see where you could just put one, or it says one to four, and that's how much the price is going to be, then you can purchase it. So it's not wholesale only, but if you have a site where you want to purchase wholesale, then you can do so. But I purchase them um, single pieces only. Of course, you have to look. When you're scrolling down, you will notice on the right side where it says by piece or by lot or by bag. And that's how I find them. I do purchase mine in the plus size bra section because um, it's not because of my size. Just it depends on your, your cup size. So anyway... I bought 12 bras. Um, I have I have five, and then the other four were for my kids. Um, four was for my daughter, and you know I bought some for my two daughters. So anyway, so this bra I think was six dollars and seventy five cents, and it does tell you the sizes. They come in a array of colors, but gorgeous bra, push up bra, beautiful lacing. Okay, six dollars and like seventy five cents. I love it. Brand new spanking bra. They're super cheap, but they really make your boobs like sit up. And they come in these cute little bags that you can keep, which I probably will keep. So if you guys get a wig in one of these bags, just know that it was from that. This bra here was actually $4.75. And I bought a bunch of them for me and my daughters in all different colors 
$4.75. I like these bras a lot because the backs are really sturdy um, and supportive. So you have, some of them have three hooks, um, but the backs are wide. They're very wide. So I love that because it supports my back rows or what have you. But I love the backs because they're really wide and the sides too. But they also have these straps that can be taken off if you want to. But I love them because they actually do sit up. So $4.75 for this bra is like amazing. Amazing. I also got another one in black, which I'm not going to even bother showing you because it's the same thing. And I got another one in a lighter color pink, which is the same thing. And then this one here, which was $7. Um, also, this is a little bit different. This is kind of like a cheetah print. They have these in like an array of different colors as well. And of course, the same backing. It does have removable pads if you want to put them in your bra to make those titties look bigger. But they are great push-up bras. Push-up bras indeed. So this one here was like $7. It's really cute. It has like this cheetah print on it. Not so cheetah-ish, but very pretty still. Same concept. And yeah, so I bought 12 bras and all together with shipping was $79. So you cannot beat that. If you go somewhere else and get 12 bras, I guarantee you guys are not going to spend $79. And let's take out the shipping. You're not going to spend $60-something. So yeah. Um, I'll buy my panties elsewhere because panties are less expensive than bras, but for the most part, the bras, I really do like them. So like I said, just take your time and look through the site. They're not all so wholesale, but they do have a jewelry website, which I just ordered a bunch of jewelry from. And I'll be showing you that soon, as soon as it gets here, like statement pieces like this as well for the cheap cheap. So let's get on to this real talk. If you guys um, have an issue and you want to relate to me, go ahead and send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail. And please make sure to put in a subject line, real talk, so that way I can get back to you in a timely manner. So let's begin with the first real talk. Hi April, my name is Monique and I've recently come across your videos while randomly on YouTube. And of course the names change. I'm hoping for some serious help in regards to my aunt Brittany. I'm 19 years old and she's 31. She and I have been inseparable since I was born. Our relationship goes much deeper than just aunt and niece. We share a very special bond and I love her more than words can express. She's been a constant role model for me in every area of life ex except one. She's going through a tough struggle right now in her personal life, and I'm at my wit's end of ways to help. So I'm coming to you. Here's her situation. She and her boyfriend slash baby's father have been in an unhealthy and stagnant relationship for 10 years now. And it has been so difficult for me to see her go back and forth with him for this long because I know she deserves better. But how do I get her to see that too? She is completely aware of the fact that she has brought her confidence as a woman all the way down. So much that she is afraid to be alone and thinks that if they broke up, she couldn't find anyone else to be with her. He is weak April and wants to keep her down because he knows he doesn't have one damn thing going for himself and that she does. She has a college education, great personality and beautiful looks. This is what intimidates him. He's a constant cheater, has a drinking problem, goes in and out of jail for DUI, loses jobs back and forth and treats her like shit, never takes her out, doesn't like to travel or do anything but stay home. One year ago she finally decided to leave him but then found out she was pregnant after two miscarriages. This, of course, made her stay with him and gave her all of these fantasies that the baby would make them closer and they'll be back together in love and things between them will be perfect. Wrong. It's been just the opposite. He's cheated on her the last six months of her pregnancy and now that the baby is here, is here it doesn't do shit for him. He comes home from his weak-ass job and goes to bed. He only shows interest in the baby when he gets to buy new clothes and dress him up or wear him on his arm like a showpiece for his friends. Every time she puts him out, he, she allows him to come right back in and in, in a matter of days because he has nowhere to go. The two of them live in her mother's house, my grandmother. I could go on and on more about this, but I'll spare you. How do I get her to stop being such a fool? Okay, Monique, girl. Okay, so your aunt sounds somewhat similar. Like her situation sounds somewhat similar to mine's, but not so much mine's. Well, my past relationship with my ex-husband. And I say that because he was a drunk. He had a drinking problem. He was in and out of jail. He got enough DUIs and went and spent each summer vacation, because I call it a summer vacation, for 60 days at his spa, at his spa resort, which was jail, for two summers in a row. 
he always has like these weak ass whack ass jobs and whenever i would put him out of course he would come back to me because his mama and his sister didn't want him living there but he had nowhere to go and i kind of felt like okay things to get better we got kids together something something yada yada however it didn't get no better he just continued to borrow money that he never paid back steal money eventually kept drinking and just became more and more of an irritation to me and it's sad to say, but I lasted this long, that long for 16 years with him, and it was sad to say. I kind of felt the same way, like, oh, nobody's going to want me, because I have five kids, and nobody's going to want me. This is what I felt, and I felt like, okay, I'm in this little town in Schenectady, New York, where there's nothing. When I say there's nothing, there's freaking nothing, and I felt like I'm never going to find anyone there, and my, my life is just like, okay, I might as well just stay with this guy, because I do love him. And he loves me, so I'm hoping, and we have kids together, and we've been down for this long, we might as well continue. Why waste my time, That why waste all the years that I've invested in him? I've invested too much time and effort and shit. I finally got over him when we had like this humongous fight, argument, scuffle, because of one of his drunken outrages, and I had to light fire to his ass. Not literally set him on fire, but I had to light fire to that ass, okay? Never mess with somebody when you're drunk and the other person is sober because you will get the shit kicked out of you, okay? Yes. Okay? So anyway, um, sometimes, you know what, you can tell someone until they're blue in the face and until you're blue in the face what they need to do with themselves. They're really never going to get it until they decide to get it. So, you know, I've been there and done that. Um, my bestie, she's always been on my side and she's always been Team April and I've always been Team Robin. But she's always supported me in my decisions. But I know deep in her heart that she just really felt like, you know what, I know you're tired of him. Just leave him alone. But she didn't want to say that to me. However... You can tell someone over and over to get out that situation, get out of that abusive situation. They will continue to go back until they are really sick and tired of it. You, it's just a thing. I'm not really sure why the present, why that is, but you, you want to listen to your friends and family, but you still have your heart and feelings, and in the back of your mind, you're always feeling like positive thoughts like I can change him or this can get better and he'll change and things will get better because we have a kid together I will tell you this kids do not make any relationship any better for those of you who feel like I'm gonna get pregnant and go out and have a kid with somebody and he'll really love me no sometimes that draws them away because when kids are involved there is more bills less money to spend on yourself you're not able to get away as much as you'd like to. There's more noise and ruckus in the household, and there's more responsibilities. And some people just cannot handle those particular responsibilities. So it kind of like fucks up the relationship sometimes. And it's sad to say because kids are a blessing, but some people just can't handle that in a relationship. And kids do not make any relationship better. So I really wish that woman would get over the whole fucking fact about, well, if I have a baby with him, it'll get better. No, bitch. It'll get worse, okay? If he was already an asshole, he's going to be triple the asshole when you have a baby. And like she said, he's going to cheat on you. He cheated on your aunt while she was six months in her pregnancy. That's the lowest, the lowest of the low, only because the person's already pregnant. And they probably feel some type of way about their body and how their, just their appearance in general. And for some man to go outside of that home and that dwelling and fuck with another bitch is totally off limits. Like, for real, I just couldn't mess with you no more if you did some shit like that to me. Because pregnancy is a blessing. And being pregnant, you should never be stressed the fuck out. And if you're going to have some dude, some half-ass man stress you out during your pregnancy, you really do not need to be with his sorrowful, trifling ass. Now, as for him being trifling, in and out of jail, low-budget nigga, and your aunt has more morals and standards, that is true. It's sometimes, you know what, the good outweighs the bad, and sometimes they just clash. You know what I'm saying? Some women just love a bad boy. I might be one of those who love a bad boy, too, However, I know where my limits are, and I know where you're not about to take me. So, I don't let you try to pull the wool over my eyes. But, as far as your aunt is concerned, Monique, it doesn't matter how much you tell her. She is going to feel how she feels. And she's only going to get it when she's really sick and tired and fed up. Like, totally fed up of the whole situation. And that's unfortunate, because sometimes a situation can get really bad to where that's when that person is going to actually open up their eyes and realize... This is so unhealthy for me, and he is so not worth my time. And as far as being alone, a lot of women, you know, being alone and not having too many friends and just not a lot of social activity going on in your life, that kind of stagnates the person also. So she's just basically 
looking towards him for peace of mind, comfortability, conversation, and things like that. And so that brings her to the alone part. And you know something? I will tell you this. Sometimes it feels so good to be alone and not in a relationship. Like I've been in that relationship, that my past marriage, for over 16 years. And when I finally decided to leave and move away from the drama, it felt so good. Like I was just so relieved to be without him. And then we kind of like started rekindling things and he was going to or was supposed to come out here. And I'm so glad that he did it because... A part of me was like, there was like 10% of me that was like wanting him. And the 90% didn't. And the 10% was because I was alone. And I don't even want that dude breathing near me. Like, for real? I started thinking about, okay, I'm so relaxed. And I go and I come as I please. I do whatever I want. If I don't want to clean my room, I don't have to clean my room. If I don't want to cook fucking dinner, I don't got to cook fucking dinner. This motherfucker would, oh, you ain't cooked tonight, blah, blah. I ain't got time. Nigga, eat your... Eat, eat something. Just go somewhere. Just go somewhere. Alright? Just swallow your spit and go somewhere. But sometimes being alone is such a beautiful thing. Like, for real. Seriously. Like, you know, I am in a relationship now. And my boyfriend is in New York. Um, He will be back um, next month on the 24th of August. And yeah, I do miss him. We speak all the time on the phone. And sometimes that is too much for me because I really don't know what to talk about after like three hours on the phone with you. Um, every single day. So when he's not here, it's, um, it's really relaxing because he's one that, you know, he's a great person. Um, but I don't really want the up underneath me type shit. I need to breathe. I need space. I don't really like you in my face all the time. If you want to sleep downstairs, you can go do that too. I need my space. So I do like to be alone a lot. I don't get lonely because I have my dog and I have my kids and I have so many other things to do. What you really need to do, instead of keep badgering your Aunt Monique about, oh, leave him alone because she's not listening no more to you. She's really not. She has blocked that part out. Anything else you're telling her, she's probably listening to. But what you need to do is involve her in social activities. And maybe she will see someone or maybe she will just see something that will open up her eyes and sharpen and lighten that brain to where she realizes this is how happy people live. And this is what real living is about. You know, so stop badgering her because she's not listening. And it doesn't matter how much you tell her until you're blue in the face. She's not going to get it and she's not going to leave until she is ready to leave. But you can involve her in a lot of other social activities, which may make her leave process a lot more speedier as you would like it to be. So on that note, Divas, let Monique know what you think about her aunt's situation and what would you do um, if that was a family member or a friend. Now on to the next one. Okay. First, I want to start off by saying that you are one of my favorite YouTubers and I admire you so much. I didn't put that in there. That was actually in the email. I am 20 years old and my life has gotten really off track. I am in love with an amazing guy and he does a lot for me. He is not lazy and he has his own and we go great together. Soon after we started dating in 2013, I dropped out of school, college, because I realized that is something I did not want to do. My passion is hair and makeup and I'm actually trying to get started on YouTube. Me quitting school turned into me losing my job, totaling my car, and going to jail, and totaling my paid for car. Now I'm staying with my parents, and they keep bitching and complaining about how I'm not doing anything. It's like I can't get them to see that this is my actual dream. They also put a lot of blame on my boyfriend for my decisions, but I have my own mind. Please help. We're going to call her Megan. Megan, first of all, I want to tell you thank you. For having me one of your favorite YouTubers. I appreciate it. So with that being said. I'm going to be real with you. And I hope that I'm still your favorite YouTuber after this. Megan open your goddamn eyes girl. What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay. You might not have wanted to be in college. But sometimes you got to do what you need to do to get ahead in life. Some things in life are just not easy come as easy go for others. Now you see all these people on here on YouTube that are getting all these views. They're buying these cars. They're showing off their house, their room tours, their clothes, their shoes, and all of this. Let me tell you something, Megan. It's not that fucking easy, okay? It's not that easy. There are a million people on YouTube, okay? And you may just get lucky and be noticed. Now... This is my third time on YouTube, meaning my very first channel, I had over 70,000, 75,000 subscribers. Okay, and I got hacked. 
and that channel I was on top of the world that's how I felt like I was on a cloud on top of the world because I was getting all kind of offers I also had a real good job so I worked a good ass paying job and I also freaking did YouTube videos loved YouTube and still do I got hacked and it felt like my entire world came trashing down second time I got on YouTube I got back up there um, my channel got hacked not even hacked but suspended because of my links um, I guess some company in another country took one of my links from my videos my YouTube video link and posted it on throughout the, you, 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 the internet and was tagging it to all types of things that it wasn't related to it was beauty related and it was tagging it to all types of things like shoes and whatever it came back to YouTube it kept coming back as spam so they suspended my channel for that so this is the third freaking channel and I've had to really work my way up for this channel harder than hard. And yeah, I still get little perks and things like that, but I also run my own business and I bust my ass. So I'm, I'm, I'm not on here showing my car off and I'm not showing my home off and my shoes off that I buy um, expensive things like that. I don't do that because that's not me. I'm really cheap anyway. So if you see me showing off some shit, it's some cheap shit so you guys can save some money. But you want to get started on YouTube. It's a miracle that people get started on YouTube. And I say this because there's so many people. So it's sometimes who you know when you get, you know, featured and noticed and discovered on YouTube. It's not about, well, I'm going to start doing this hair channel and I'm going to have all these subscribers. It doesn't work like that. When I first started out doing YouTube videos, there was only two of us, three of us black women, African American women who did wig videos. Other than that, there was no women out there who was doing wig videos. Ever since then, there has been like about a thousand people doing wigs now. So it's nothing really popular anymore. It's nothing original. But you didn't quit your job, lost your car, got into an accident, went to jail, had to move back home with your parents. How's that working out for you? Okay, and they bitching, they bitching that you ain't doing nothing. Shit, yeah, I would be bitching too. I have a 19 year old daughter that lives with me, but she has a job and she takes care of her kid. If she wasn't doing nothing, you damn right I would be bitching because you ain't about to live up under my roof and not do shit. At that grown age, you crazy. Now, I feel like, you know, you and your boyfriend, you guys, you said we, we good together, we click, he's got his own. He's got his own. You ain't got shit right now, but a roof over your head, which don't even belong to you. It belongs to your parents. Okay, who wants to go to college? Not a lot of people want to go to school and continue on their education for a job. Not a lot of people want that. But sometimes that's what needs to be done. It's unable to get ahead. Unless you want to work like a job that's not paying minimum wage, but it's paying a little bit more, but it's not paying as good as like them high-end executive jobs. If you want to be like somewhere in like the low medium of the food chain, then by all means, don't go to school. But if you feel like your YouTube career your YouTube stardom is going to kick off and you're going to be like this one big YouTube guru with lights shining all over your head you're going to be flown out to here and there you're going to get all these things then keep dreaming because it does not work like that okay if that was the case y'all would not see me hauling no cheapskate haul videos because I would be well I'm so cheap it doesn't matter how much money I have I'm like really budget friendly I don't believe in spending unnecessary money on things when you can find it cheaper so I can't really say that portion about me but shit I would be in a vacation somewhere I would be on vacation somewhere with my kids relaxing and enjoying it instead of sitting in the house or not even in the house but in Arizona which I do love but because this is like a vacation every day but just you know what Megan YouTube is not all it's cut out to be people betray things on camera because that's what they want you to feel sometimes um, a lot of people don't keep it real and honest with their subscribers me for one I'll tell you in a heartbeat yeah I used to be on welfare many 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 years ago when I was your age okay so like I was like 22 23 24 years old and I had to work my way up I got a good ass paying job and I busted my ass for that so YouTube is not my life YouTube is not my life, but it is my hobby, and I enjoy doing it, and it is a scapegoat for me, and it allows me to communicate with people, and I love doing it. So I don't look on it to feed my kids, and I don't look on it to bread, um, butter my bread, pay my electric bill, or anything like that, because had I did, you guys would not see me on here like that, and I wouldn't have these fucking lights turned on like this, fucking running my electric bill up. 
but i really do think megan that you need to take your ass back to school and get a job stop being a bum in your parents house and laying around doing nothing because it's not fair to them and like you said your boyfriend has his own not you i'm pretty sure he's probably feeling the same way what man what real man wants a woman that don't do shit for herself really you were just a piece of pussy then to him he could find that anywhere so i would suggest that you get your shit together girl real talk Mhm. Mm so ladies let megan know how you would feel about her situation what would you guys do What's your suggestions? Okay, how much time we got left? I gotta check and see how much time we got here. Okay, so we got 17 minutes. All right. Okay, so here goes the next one. All right. Hey, I really need your advice on something with a sad face. My boyfriend and I have been together for five years. We have a three-year-old together. He currently lives in another state, and my daughter and I were moving in August. He said it would be best to come in December since... Since April, things have been a bit rocky with us. It started when we got into an argument about parenting. He has a 10-year-old that lives with him. He brought up a situation from Christmas. His 10-year-old wanted a snow cone. The 3-year-old was sick at the time. We were out around um, we were out around old years or New Year's night. I said no because I don't want the younger one crying being that we was out and she was getting over a cold. He got upset in April about something that happened in December saying I'm treating the child like she has no understanding. I simply said no, a 10 year old has better understanding than a 3 year old when it comes to no. He got mad at me, didn't speak to me for 2 weeks. I decided to go visit him and it was okay. After I returned he said that he had a discharge and asked if I have if I have been sleeping around. Oh, okay. He said he had a discharge in his penis and asked if I have been sleeping around. I told him no. I went to get tested. He said he has and STD, which doesn't make sense if I am negative. You didn't go to the doctor and you said you wasn't sleeping around. My test came back negative. I showed him proof. He said he hasn't gone to the doctor. The week before he took a, t um, the week before he took a week off. I honestly feel as if he's lying. I asked him, I, oh, where am I? I asked him if he had been with anyone. He said no, and then he said I do not trust him. I asked him if our relationship would be okay. He said, we're fine and everything will be, um, will be oil. Maybe she meant to say fine. This was Saturday. Sunday morning, I noticed he was up, so I sent him a message. I realized he was talking to someone. He got mad, called me, and said we need to break up. He said, I don't trust him, and for him to be happy, we need to end it. Then during, um, then during this, he said, I sacrificed my happiness for him. That I don't sacrifice my happiness for him. Then as the days went on, he said I wouldn't say certain things because I wouldn't want to fight. I mean, people should be careful what they say because we love that person. I then asked, what about us moving there? He said, I can still move and, we will, and he will help us get on our feet and help me become the person I want to be. On a Saturday, I told him I was going to the store to buy her stuff, the daughter. The visa card got declined. I called him and told him about it. He said he cannot do anything about it. I said, okay, well, send me a new car. And he said, okay. I asked him what's up. He got upset and, hang, and hung up. Yesterday, I asked him if I can come visit him so we can talk and do things together. He said, no, because that is wasting money. He said, I'm only thinking about the relationship. I should focus on myself because he's on, his only goal is to be successful and work smart. Then I asked him what is the real issue. He got upset saying, we can work on things, but I need to leave him alone. I asked him, how are we working on things if I leave you alone? He said when he's ready to talk to me, he will. I keep pushing him, and he's trying to work things out. And I, I asked if he's, if he's talking or seeing someone. He answered and said, if he was, he would not tell me to still move and try and work on us. I said, okay, and I left him alone. He called me later and said family and our relationship is important to him, to me, and not him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He called me later and said family and our relationship is important to me, meaning herself, and not to him. He said that he can focus his energy on other things. We will try and work things out. He then said, we'll see what happens. I'm confused because one minute I'm moving so we can be together. Next, he doesn't want us to be together. I feel like he has sex or is with someone and is trying to get a ride out of me. Now he's saying we'll work on things and, let's, and let things play out and see what happens. How can you work on something and not try? I'm so in love with this man, but I'm afraid of going there and, being, and, and he breaks up with me. I won't have family to go by. And I don't understand why he just wants to throw away five years. We can call her Charlotte. Okay, first of all, Charlotte, girl, please, 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 okay? Please. 
That man does not fucking want you. Straight up, okay? He is playing so many games. His dick has... His, his penis, excuse me, is discharging. And you've went to the, hospital, the doctor's office and you're clean. And he hasn't gone to the doctor's office. Well, seems like whoever he's fucking with has given him something. And uh, yes, he's fucking with somebody. That is just plain, blatantly right there. One minute he wants to break up with you. Then he's telling you that if I was um, with someone, I wouldn't tell you to move here. We'll work on things. Then he's telling you that family and friendship and relationships are important to you, but not to him. Why would you want to be with someone who has just told you that a relationship and family is not important to them? That he can focus on other things. What type of inconsiderate, selfish son of a bitch would even say anything like that to someone and think that they're supposed to still be ride or die for them? Girl, please, that man is not even thinking about you or your kid, okay? Move there. Bitch, you better stay your ass wherever you at now. Don't go seeing him. Don't call him. He's telling you to leave him alone. Leave him the fuck alone. He seems like a psychopath, if you ask me. He's got, like, this wishy-washy attitude. One minute he's happy, then the next minute he's not. Then one minute he's happy, then the next minute he's not. He's like a bipolar asshole, for real. Like, you want to be with me, and then you don't want to be with me. You're telling me that you're discharging. We'll work on things, but leave me alone. How can you work on anything if you want to be left alone? That means that you don't want to work on anything bottom line okay bottom line i don't get it um some women you know yeah i don't really understand how you could be in love with someone who treats you so unfairly okay he's not concerned about you you go and visit him what do you guys do have sex do you guys go out do, what do you guys even talk about because he seems like he's just a bad person to even communicate with he seems like he has not an ounce of consideration in his body like he does not care Dude does not fucking care, okay? Charlotte, my advice to you for this one is to stay your ass wherever your ass is now. If he really wants to see you, then you stop going to visit him because you're making the initiative and he is not. Not once did you mention to me that he comes to visit you. You're always asking me, well, can I come see you? What kind of relationship is that if you got to ask the person if you guys come, can you come see them and you've been with them for five years and you got a kid together? You shouldn't even have to ask. You should have a key to his apartment or his house, wherever he's staying at. You shouldn't have to say, oh, baby, can I come visit you? What type of shit is that? I would never ask because I don't like being turned down and I don't like the word no. So I'm not about to ask you. However, I'm not going to ask because I like to do pop-up home visits, okay? So if your ass is doing some shit that you ain't got no business doing, I will catch you in the midst of it because you will not be expecting my black ass to be popping up at the goddamn door asking you can I come fucking visit you I wish a motherfucker would tell me no you can't come visit me that will put all kind of lights and bells and rings and whistles all in my head like oh I can't hmm so I can't come visit you why come and that ain't even proper English why come how come I can't come visit you okay I'm not gonna come visit you best believe my ass to be smoking down that highway street wherever um yeah here i am oh this you said you can't nigga i'm here now what okay he doesn't want a relationship with you he does have someone else point blank we can all see that i'm pretty sure that the ladies that are watching this can see that your man has somebody else and that his relationship with you is not considered a relationship he's not taking it seriously he said that he'll help you get on your feet and become the person you want to be when you move out there. He did not say that we will work on things together. We can see what happens. Well, that is another way of pushing a person off in a nice way. When someone tells you, we'll see what happens. It's just a nice way of saying, I don't want to fuck with you. Okay? That's a nice way of saying it. And trust me, I know this because I've said that plenty of times. We'll see what happens. Okay? Just basically, I ain't fucking with you. Please, go ahead. Yeah. So, Charlotte, on that note, wake up, girlfriend. Stay where your family is at because you'll need them for the moral support once you find out that this asshole is seeing someone else. And his dirty dick ass needs to go take himself to the doctor and get tested for an STD instead of leaking fucking nasty shit all over the place. Burning bitches. Okay? Ugh. Anyway, um, unfortunately, the Real Talk fourth one is probably going to be...
I probably won't be able to get to it because it's only eight minutes left on my memory card. Because you guys know, I run my mouth. Like, I do. I really, really run my mouth. And let's see. Yeah, I do run my mouth. But I will do three next week. Um, I think three is, 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 is good. What do you guys think? Three a week? Um, it, They tend to end up being like 30 minutes, like sitcom shows or whatever. So, yeah. And let me know what you think about the new background. This is just the other side of my room. I got tired of sitting in front of my bed. But I did like that spot because I had the window which gave me like the best perfect lighting. Especially for the daytime. So with this particular area where I'm at, I have like five freaking lights on me, okay? Because I need to have it well lit. And I'm not counting my little tree light and my little lights behind me. But five lights. And that's like, whew. So I do have a fan in front of me. But yeah, so on that note, leave your information, or not your information, your comments below what you think of these situations. And as always, I will see you guys soon on my next video. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and thumbs this video up for you, girl. And as always, I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious.